Hello, my name is Jacob Workfield. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, music producer, composer, and all-round creative dude. I'm starting a podcast called the Creative Thinkers Podcast. This podcast will be about interviewing and having interesting conversations with creative people. The first episode will be about interviewing and having a conversation with my two honours supervisors who had been working with me during my honours year. They helped and guided me through writing my first dissertation on found sound music. In future episodes, I plan to interview the other students that I had been working with during my honours year. Hope you enjoy. Maybe consider leaving a like or subscribing. Thank you. That's a great setup. How are we working? Can you hear me? Sorry. I need to okay. hold it. Sorry. I need to hold it. Yeah. Have you got questions? Not really. I'm not sure I've got anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was now that worried we've, of. Now that we've got this, we're all done. Now it's all done, we're we are, don't we're have we're to right. think about anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's 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 I had some like general questions, but I wanted to just talk about the um, dissertation, I think, and the honours here. Like, how do you think it went with me and <laughs> in general, like, with COVID and stuff? Yeah. I don't think COVID was a huge no. problem, was it? No. I still do academic work, which is great. Yeah. That thing about academic. It, it felt like there was much more impact on undergrad work or... Um, mm any of the other classes but I felt with you we could and because of the format and because of the, the content we didn't have to we could communicate although mm -hmm. you know again I felt better when we were face to face yeah. I felt yeah. more connected and less um, um, and I didn't know whether that was because of I'm not used to working online or mm. whether whether the sorts of things that you do online um, I've been thinking a lot the last few weeks um, about th through other work I've been doing about the notion of the face-to-face -face and the notion of um, when people are in, in, a, in each other's presence what gets communicated how it gets communicated um, that we've actually had that ripped away from us by COVID-19 yeah. and um, and then I've been reading lots about storytelling, collaborative, collaborative work, collaborative storytelling in particular. Um, and I was thinking, and for example, I'm doing some work tomorrow with verbatim, some, some verbatim theatre work, and that's where you've almost got to be in the presence of the human to yeah, to understand the impact, because they're telling mm. quite personal stories about things that happened mm. to mm. people. And I, I don't know if you. It's not to say that you can't get that on the screen. But yeah, but I, because I think being a person with someone, like, there's just like a instinctual kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah. being in the same room as your band, mm. you don't yes. have to talk. Yes. Mm. And yes, you can pick up on cues that yep. may not be very present in mm. like body language or anything, but. Mm just by listening to each other play. I think that happens when you run your first Zoom meeting or Zoom <laughs> lecture <laughs> tutorial and everybody sort of talks at the wrong time yeah, and doesn't yeah, sort of yeah. interject and sort yeah. of have to develop some sort of etiquette <laughs> where there's actually longer pauses of silence hmm. to let someone sort of cut in because you don't have that body movement of saying, OK, yeah, I'm done I've talking. taken, yeah, yeah, I've got the talking stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then that plays out. I think, like, if you compare a sort of a Zoom meeting to a phone call, it certainly improved mm. because yeah, you get absolutely. the facial expressions. Yes, you know, yes. you get some body language. You do yeah. a bit some, yeah. but comparing it to in person is it's never yeah. going to be yeah. the same. You know, I don't think. Yeah. So it's just like, it's, is it that more most communication happens in not a literal literary sense? So it's body motion, body movements as well as voice intonation, inflection, all that sort of thing, and yeah. the actually text of what's said is like only very relatively small part of the overall communication method yeah. message <laughs> <laughs> it's like with the, um, when you do message people yeah. you don't get yeah. that implied exactly like, undercurrent of it's it it's a minefield yeah you don't know if they <laughs> might be angry or might be happy yeah because there's no inflection of their words because it's just text on the mm. screen mm. Mm. so I guess that's why they invented emojis. Mm, mm. <laughs> you can put a happy face after mm, everything. Mm, mm. <laughs> that could be. Yeah, I was because uh, I, 
I was, had cause to think about it yesterday because um, I used to work with the Australian Theatre of the Deaf in Sydney. And I, when you sign, mm. the tone, you know, like when we speak, we control tone in terms of mm. what we want to get across. And tone is the triangle from the head to the waist. And you read sign language for its tone. So you can be making a sign like why. Mm. And if it's why or why mm. or whatever mm. so and that works quite well mm. on 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 screen mm. you know sign mm. works quite well because you are focused the, the the visual tone is given as opposed to the the oral tone it's harder um yeah. people are much more i think people are much more ch um uh, 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 um, timorous um, uh, when they're on camera or in front of a microphone yeah. it's really mm. interesting to watch mm. um I guess it's the, like the idea that people are watching it, but no one's here except us. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You have to assume your audience is yeah. friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. But you also got to have so the like. I think there's you got to realize that um, people, whatever they say, it does is not true. Like, mm. It's your own beliefs and that and if they mm. challenge your beliefs that's okay they have their own opinion but mm. Mm. we've got to understand that um yeah we're just people mm. yeah yeah definitely <laughs> yeah but i guess the internet can be very cruel because <laughs> mm. mm. there's people just sitting in basements and mm. with no friends <laughs> <laughs> but knowing how to communicate properly well not properly but not how, knowing how to communicate well, that's some of constructively them. Yeah, yeah yeah it's also people that work in offices or yeah. on the bus mm. on the I mean, everybody's yeah. on the internet all the time really aren't they so it's that's i guess it's hard to gauge the audience then yeah you know they know the youtube dem demographic something like 25 year old males mm. or you know even younger but that's pretty much youtube yeah and then netflix is more female, more of an older demographic, so they have, but the internet overall is just impossible to kind of, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a human right to have yeah. internet access now, so there's mm. even people in third mm. world countries. Well, it is, really? Actually. Yeah. And have good access. That. Good yeah. access is a, it's a human right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. You just, you know. Yep, to have the access to it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Along with water. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But but it is. I mean, yeah. it, it, is, it is, is, is an essential. I guess it's um, the right to have free knowledge in a sense yeah well just consider like this last pandemic how you know how relatively well the world the world has responded to it yeah. like in australia we got so many warning signs from overseas mm. to, to, and not just not just like the government saying look this is serious you better mm. take it seriously but like direct stuff like through yeah. social media people yeah. taking videos in in china yeah and you know and then in in europe i think was the next kind of big outbreak kind of area and you know then america in, as well and so we had you know it, we had a lot of warning here mm. thanks to the internet mm. and the interconnectivity of it and the, the mm. free flow of information mm. so you know without that arguably our mm. response would have been a lot slower and mm. a lot more reluctant and we were, you know, got on top of it and there are a couple quickly. of podcasts mm. that we i did. that i listened to that came out of the uk mm. that were really mm. that made you think quickly about um, yeah. you know, in ways we might not normally have. Definitely. I think that, so. I think that Definitely. the right to be informed is yeah. is, 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 is critical. Mm, mm. Google's been talking about the um, in Australia with the. I think there was some bill that we were trying to pass about the news getting exclusive rights to like analytics of people who use Google, so they can like push their news articles to the people without right. anyone else's like Google was saying that I, I can't remember exactly what it was like it was on the bottom of Google one day but like not like small news outlets would just be pushed to the wayside because mm. mm. these bigger organisations are paying for the right to use these analytics before anyone else mm -hmm. which stops like small news outlets but also stops small creators mm -hmm. or anyone on the internet who wants a voice mm -hmm. in Australia mm -hmm. they're not getting bigger mm. 
That I mean, that's um, that happens in my world when when people want to put on Shakespeare all the time. <laughs> um, any, any new local plays, any new any new works, there's just no space left mm -hmm. because you know larger theatre companies have made a decision about what is most popular. Mm -hmm. So therefore, a new play written yeah. by somebody in you know Strathfield or, or mm -hmm. Strath, Strath Sydney. Oh my God! Um, but you know what I mean. Yeah. That that yeah. that idea. I mean, I think that's yeah. That I mean, with the right to information comes the yeah. right of the the suppliers of the information to give you what they think you should have, and mm. I think mm. that's really I can, you know, mm. the human. Being in any mm. thing like news, mm. music, anything. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think it's no one should, no one corporation should have that power to. It's quite hard to find alternate stuff to what, you know, yeah. I, I feel crowded sometimes. I feel crowded by my own choices. Mm. You, know, mm. I think, oh, you know, I get always a bit bored with my own choices because that's what <laughs> I'm being offered. Mm. Um, uh, you know, I've just been yeah. sitting in the office, listen, I've been marking and I've been listening to music and, yeah. and it keeps supplying a particular type of music. Mm. Um, you know, are you, you, where I go. I mean, like, so like are you using Spotify or Apple no, Music? No, I've just, uh, I've just, I've, I've, uh, there's a post a group called Postmodern Jukebox oh, that, I I post that, yeah. I, uh, that I listen to and we I've did. just been listening to yeah. a lot of that stuff and, yeah. you yeah. know, and just occasionally you hear a voice that makes you go, wow. Mm. Um, mm. And there, and, you know, and, you, and that's the great thing. I always think about the internet is that you, without the internet you would never have heard that voice. Yeah. There's, a, there's a woman called Robin Adele Smith Anderson I really like. There's this other guy called Von Smith who's just mm. one of those you know, voices. Yeah. Oh, you know. <laughs> and he's just brilliant. He just, he just goes up and down the scale and sideways mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and he's just, yeah. So it's, but there are moments when you, you know, even the you get trapped by your own sort of mm. likes. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, it's funny because like yeah, the internet was meant to democratize everything yes. and sort of like break down any monopolies. And it, it, actually, the music industry it has to a large extent mm. because mm. it's enabled self distribution. Mm. You know, in my lifetime, the whole model of how you succeed in the music industry has changed. It flipped on flipped completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's better to do it yourself really mm. now with and hiring people for help where you need it yeah. on a contractual basis yeah. rather than having this thing that essentially owns you for a little while or at least yeah. creatively owns you for a little while. Mm. Um, so the internet solved that yeah. but how things like, yeah it's bizarre, there's been new monopolies forming I mm. suppose and those, those monopolies tend to be run by internet mm. companies or internet based yeah. entrepreneurs like mm. Google mm. and Amazon and sort of, sort of like it's, it's funny. Like the internet is, it's democratized sort of creativity, and even to an extent, like if you want to make clothing, you can sell it on Etsy, and you can yeah. have a little store and things. So it's probably easier in yeah. many creative areas, um, like movies, Teespring, and stuff that they actually print everything for you. You just supply the design. That's right. That's right. Red so bubble. There's yeah. all these avenues for people to to produce yeah. and sell directly, except in the internet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where if you, because it's Apple, it's YouTube, it's mm. Facebook, mm. you know, um, these massive, massive monopolies that are actually how we need something bigger than the internet to break them apart now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, what's sort of good is like people's attention span, this is one thing that gives me faith, is sort of, mm. it doesn't last for that long. And even Facebook now is becoming old hat. And sort of Instagram is now scrolling. Yeah, like yeah. my my current students, are, like Instagram's even getting a bit because TikTok's around. Yeah. So that's what's kind of good <laughs> is this, this built-in redundancy. New. Yes, like TikTok and just new. That's right. And when mm. Facebook was getting old, Instagram came in. Yeah. But now Facebook owns Instagram anyway. That's right. That's right. That's right. Going back to what you're saying about um, creators being able to, there's no monopoly, and they're able to create themselves mm. there's a great band that I love who did an uh, amazing thing in that sense called Wolfpack Wolfpack I've heard of Wolfpack yeah. yeah so their whole idea was to like um, distribute all their stuff on YouTube and Spotify and stuff and to fund their uh, first album or one of their albums they put I think you already know about this they put a like a three minute clip on Spotify with silence and people would stream it and they made like 10 grand from it because they got so many streams from this one thing but it funded their album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
So the yeah. fans were happy to just play silence. Yeah. So there was no sound. There's no, no, no really? sound. Yeah. Like you put for it on three loop. minutes. Mm. Yeah. And that was sufficiently interesting for people to. Well, it wasn't interesting. It was. A, I guess it was a free way for them to support the band. It's kind of like crowdsourcing. Right. They were doing it in a um, interesting way. It was purely to make money. It was purely to make money. And it did. But they. Because Spotify works yeah. on a number of plays, yeah. and they hadn't considered that someone would upload silence and then ask their fan base to just play that silence on, on the loop, loop yeah. which just ticks up the metric, and then that gives them money. So, but and now Spotify have you yeah. can't upload silence yeah. anymore. <laughs> they reject silence yeah. because why was they upset about that? Because they, they cheated um, the they system. Weren't, they weren't, <laughs> but yeah, they weren't. There wasn't actually any music. They weren't providing any entertainment for yeah. that for that payment. Yeah. And you can't own silence anyway, so it wasn't yeah. really copyrightable. <laughs> you can't own silence. <laughs> you can't own, can't own silence, <laughs> no. so yeah. So Spotify, for Spotify, so there was a gap in Spotify's broadcast? Well, yeah, there was a gap. There's a loophole in the way it operated in that just that they hadn't thought that someone would... Actually do it. Apt- just do this, just upload silence and ask their fan base to, to loop silence and but just tick up a play count, which generates revenue directly. And Spotify yeah. went, oh, you're getting revenue for playing nothing. silence. For doing nothing. For well, doing nothing, or well, for uploading a s- silence, which is pretty much doing nothing. Yeah, because when, when you play on Spotify, you get music, right? Yeah, and then you play one track, you get point zero 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 one of a cent. Yeah, goes to the creator. I think like a hundred thousand when you play, it. and then you play it again, and that amount of money goes again. Yeah, and so Spotify gets nothing. No, they do it. They get a cut. Yeah, they get more. So why were they upset with that? Because. I don't know. They thought it was cheeky. I'll see if That's I can a good point because they were making money. But over. because I was, I was, my my understanding of that is like working on radio, mm. and if if there's any silence, mm. it's like what the fuck? You know, yeah. What's going on? Yeah, that's right. You know, that's right. so there's got to be something wrong if yes. you don't if you don't hear somebody I talking or somebody yes. playing music or whatever. Yes. Yep. That gap is like that's the big no-no, mm, mm. absolute no-no. Mm, no. mm, I've been, mm. got, you know, it's and, the, um, yeah. and you can't. Well, well you can't. So is it, but Spotify is not. But Spotify is not a broadcast situation. Is it? A, it's not a broadcaster, is it? It's a, no. a site you can go to and. Get music streaming from. platform. Yeah, for same music. same as YouTube. You you have to press play, yeah. and then it plays the song. But it has playlists too. So. Yeah. So. But it's but so. What's your problem? They're well, they're, you can't copyright music. I mean, that's, that's, that's silence. Yeah, that's probably probably a, a key legal issue. Okay, is that you know? Is like that interesting. Nah. Wow. Yeah. I found it. As well, yeah. or it was you know in the copyright music. Is it the same thing world? Was, it was, was, being it was used. John Cale when he did that. 433. Oh, John Cage. Oh, yeah, John yeah. John Cage. Well, that, well, that would be honest. Is that the same and deal or no, different deal? Sound, no, that yeah. did have sound. Oh. That, that was, was the person silent. sitting down. It was and called right. The Silent Album, and they made 20,000 USD off of it. I found a, a blog That's post incredible. about it. Um, so US Band Volpec might just have sold the riddle for you. Good. Yes, it does make money, about 20,000. Thank you very much. The Michigan Funk Outfit made headlines in March when they released Sleep, Sleep of High, 10 songs of science that vary Sleep between 31 seconds and 32 seconds. The result was a five-minute album of nothingness <laughs> that the band asked fans to stream on repeat. When they slept... <laughs> the when they slept, yeah. yeah, while they slept all night. The aim was to generate enough royalties for their band to go on tour, promising free shows in return. So the fans got sunk out of it, mm. which was good. Mm. So Spotify only plays 0.00 cents for each track stream. 0.00? 0. 0. 0. 7 cents. 7, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so 100 streams would be 70 cents. And did it say how many they got in the end? That's no. incredible. But I, I just thought that was a creative way of crowdsourcing. Because mm. mm. people got the content they wanted mm. for free. Mm. And shows for free, and all they had to do is play something on repeat. Mm. That's and right. The advertisers were getting their ads seen by people, so I, yeah. as you were saying, I don't understand the problem really. Mm. And I'm, sh- I'm not sure if they. I think they might have had some think in the recordings, yeah, right? Because I don't think you could have uploaded nothing. It was just yeah, an empty web yeah. file. A very quiet white noise. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you could. But you could do that now. Yeah. You know, and just say this is incredibly avant-garde. <laughs> it's just very quiet. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just turn it right up. I mean, there's, there's, also <laughs> nothing, there's also nothing to stop anybody just asking their fans to just play it on repeat and turn the speakers off. Yeah. Because it's, it's just picking up play counts on the internet. You don't yeah. actually have to... Be, you can turn the volume down in hardware. And they mm. don't know. So that, that kind of option's been open to any band wanting to... <laughs> Generate some quick money. Yeah. <laughs> Just play U2's catalog and turn the volume down. Yeah. For a week, please. I mean, with their fan base, they'd make you know millions, mass, millions, 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 millions a week. <laughs> I guess you need from a fan the, base, though. Well, from advertisers yeah. and no subscribers as well. Yes, yeah, subscri- yeah. ma- mainly subscribers. Because there's paid Spotify. Mm. It's like eleven dollars a month or something, and that's free Spotify where you get ads in between right. your song. Mm. But streaming was running at a loss since its yeah. inception, something like 10 years, um, until only last year, wow. when the number of subscribers became high enough they could, they could actually generate some sort of profit. Yeah. So it's been running off just investors pumping in you yeah. know, $50 million at a time, ridiculous amounts God. into Spotify, knowing, well, thinking that it's going to take off, and it did last year, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> 10 it's years now too like late. <laughs> somewhat profitable, but ads weren't enough to do it. It, they needed paid it's subscribers. Like a, they needed, they yeah. needed audience. Yeah. 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 That's the problem with a lot of streaming platforms. You need the audience of paying subscribers. Yeah. yeah. And Not that's just add revenue. And that's Facebook's um, conundrum because yeah. they, they just can't afford anything based on ad revenue. So they're being very militant with their use Facebook ads. Yeah. Um, so that they actually generate revenue. And Google Ads too. It's 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 not actually from external advertisers to getting users to advertise mm. themselves. It's really quite strange. Yeah. <laughs> but um, if they just charged everybody two dollars a month to use it, then it would be ad free. Yeah. But That's a lot of people wouldn't pay that. Yeah, because they've <laughs> had it for free since the start. Why? Yeah. Uh, just because there are free alternatives, I suppose. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That are ad supported. So people would prefer to mm. save, you know, not much per month and have ads. Yeah. Well, there's an, another, there's a YouTube channel I like quite a lot. They're a filmmaker channel. They just started their own streaming surface, service. Oh. Um, and it's $3 a month. And you get access to everything all their back catalogue, anything new they make, and, um, like, paying subscriber-only shows. And their whole idea around it was, I think it was called subscriber bucks or something (laughs) silly. (laughs) But the fans who pay can greenlight shows that they want to see. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. So... Wow. They pay for what they want to see, and it gets made. Huh. Yeah. That's so, bizarre. Yeah. But they've they've been around on YouTube What's for it Corridor Digital. Okay. Never they, heard of they've been around on YouTube since like 2010, 2009. Right. Right. And they were trying to get into the, like the movie industry in LA. Yeah. And they sort of realised within the past two years that they don't really like the how LA and well, the they music. don't need to do it. Yeah, mm. Mm. and they don't like how they run productions and stuff. Mm. Like they were talking about, everyone's in a union in the like filmmaking in LA. Mm. So if you're the director and you're just starting out, mm. you can't touch the camera, c- mm. can't touch sound, can't mm. touch anything. Right. Whereas it's you've it's been it's doing it's this for twenty years before, all by yourself. Mm. And that's why people like your stuff. Right, right. Mm. So, mm. It's yeah. it's extraordinary irony that 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 the United States is, in fact, into, and certainly in the entertainment industry, is mm. so unionised. I mean, mm. the, the theatre industry is incredibly mm. unionised. I remember once, Amber and I, my wife and I, were in um, Pittsburgh. A friend of ours was working on the pit with the Pittsburgh Opera, and oh, we wow. were there for the closing night of this show, and everything on stage, everything. Uh, curtains, uh, not just the set, the props, the costumes, but everything had to be stripped out of the theatre, moved to the other side of the road, 
So if we, we're in the theatre, it would be all moved onto that side of the road for half an hour, and then they and that's all the technicals, all the speakers, the cables, <laughs> the and it all had to be moved back. So because the union, the, the rules were the theatre had to be at the end of a production had to be stripped completely, completely. Um, every every what? every cable, every and the whole works. Um, oh, wow. And so and and you'd literally be <laughs> on this side of the street, and you could see all the gear on the other side of the street. <laughs> half an hour would go. Then they start bumping it back in. But it's the and same equipment that was the in there already. Well, it would be, you know, I mean, it's, um, other than know, well, you know, mm. it'd be like the C Block Auditorium here, and then yeah. there are those speakers, and the, mm -hmm. there's a sound system, and there's a bunch of lights in the ceiling. Mm. All of that would go. But it's stuff that was already in absolutely, there, and, and would need to be in. there in order for the next show to come in. So, <laughs> the, so, and wow. we were just gobsmacked because was it, that, was it that just a safety under a guise of it was no, it was about it was about clarity of role and who did what and what did they do and that everybody <laughs> needed it needed to be wow. a bare space right. each time. Everything needed to be returned back to zero in order to, in order to protect all the jobs and if there right. was, you know, was this, ah. this thing of oh Rafe you're bumping in a show could you leave that like in Australia what happens mm, is mm. people say what do you need mm, you know? mm, and mm. oh we've got a we've got a lighting rig in the ceiling what, what's on there oh we'll use some of that we'll use a bit of that we'll use a bit so sure. that's that's how it works here sure. yeah. Yeah. but there um, <laughs> Just it was incredible wow. you know, so unionized so I'm not bizarre. complaining about that person well mm. uh, um, <laughs> unions per se but it's certainly the 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 length that, mm. that some organisations go to, mm. you know, or mm. some some, you know, and it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, it's really, and it's um, um, the notion of what is the proper job and what, yeah. how does that prote be protected and mm. and so on. It's mm. very, mm. and that all adds up to mm. a very um, moribund industry, very um, mm. an industry that struggles with so much red tape and so much. But you know. Um, wow. Mm. It so just seems it's like a waste of time, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then you've got, to, you've got to look at how they got to there yeah. mm. to understand why that's the case. Yeah. Like, you know, a director can't touch a camera. Yeah. Uh, camera is my job, you know, because everybody's... Yeah. Everyone needs the, the focus job. puller, yeah. mm. you know, the, mm. the carrier of the tripod, mm. you know, all mm. of those sorts of... Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we, you know, in, and we don't just don't have that in Australia. We don't, um, and it's a giant in industry yeah. there too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, billions and billions of dollars oh, yeah. a year. Huge, you know. So, the same as the games industry now. Like ten years ago, it wasn't as big, but mm. now with like the big AAA game, yeah. they make like sometimes a billion dollars mm. over the life of the game. Mm. Mm. And maybe 500 million in the first week sometime mm. yep <laughs> yep it's absolutely unbelievable <laughs> i think games are bigger than movies yeah uh yeah definitely in the west mm. um, well also mm. in um uh asian countries as well yeah there's a big market for it there i know bollywood's pretty big uh, i don't know the, if the corridor digital to talk <laughs> a lot about um <laughs> they talk well, about bollywood a lot yeah, yeah bollywood might be bigger than anything yeah it's bigger than hollywood yeah. has been for a long time but they don't see that's that's it they don't need to yeah. even sell outside of india they've got 1.3 billion people yeah they make so, all their yeah. money yeah they, they release a youtube clip and it's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they really don't need to sell to anywhere yeah. else but it's big <laughs> yeah so there's like, some great <laughs> stuff coming out of Bollywood though yeah. like because the those corridor guys they started out as VFX artists so they've been doing this series where they um, they're like reacting to other people's works and yep. they do a, a a segment on Bollywood right. and there was this amazing one that they took a actor that was five four or something mm. and shrunk him down to like four eight or something right through VFX CGI. right right but you can't tell he looks like <laughs> a person who is three perfectly like four awesome. eight perfectly yeah. proportioned awesome. but short yeah, yeah. yeah. that's but, awesome um I know Life of Pi are one of the best CGI films yeah. was partly done in, in by India and They've CGI got some great too. artists oh, over there. Mm. And they pump out movies so much faster mm. than Hollywood as well. Yeah, yeah, there's many hands to make light work. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, production there's 
ramping up and it's all you know very much by hand yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah yeah I, um, it's amazing it is incredible Incredible. I need to so start I watching they're, some. they're not very unionized. <laughs> no. <laughs> no well, I, I, I mean, that's one of the other things I that makes them this, efficient. Yeah. I saw this <laughs> thing about co- the impact of COVID on the Bollywood industry. And oh, yeah. right. there's this guy who's just devastated because yeah. he had all his work going, and, yeah. and he's you know he's he's living in poverty. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but you know the industry is he's constantly having the, all of the things that we're used to in terms of how you make a go of being in the film industry translated to there and there's all yeah. sorts of people wanting to do mm. all sorts of things it's just the impact was um, mm. devastating mm. because it, you know, it it hits the it hits the systems it hits the mm. um, it's the people making the stuff that everyone watches yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they also they were talking about in Thailand with the movie industry over there, mm. sometimes it's cheaper to hire a stuntman than it is to hire a crash pad for the stuntman. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that in Jeez, India? It, no, in um, like Thailand and Bangkok. Thailand and Bangkok yeah, those right, yeah. kind of um, martial arts films back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah safety was like not an option. Like yeah. a, a labourer is about a dollar a day. Yeah. yeah. A US dollar a day for one one person to work for ten hours, so it's you know for fifty US dollars you can have fifty men work for you for a day. Yeah, that's that's the cost that's of production. Crazy. So you know if you want to build a house, okay, so it's quite easy. A thousand dollars. The reverse is true here. The reverse is true here. Yeah, we're unbelievably expensive. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean internationally, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're worth more, but internationally yeah. we're relatively <laughs> expensive. Yeah. I think they're worth so much more as yeah. well, but that's yeah. just just the economy, and they're living on two or three dollars a day, so you yeah. know, it's sometimes less. Yeah. But yeah, so it's crazy what you can get done. <laughs> I guess yeah. that's another topic <laughs> to dive into. Another well, that's, day. that's why they're doing the CGI. That's where yeah. they're. they're sending it to countries like that yeah know? and i think in a lot of developing asia as well the mm. case is exactly the same mm. there's also mm. some great stuff coming out of russia as well with cgi hey, yeah, yeah. right right yeah. right like th- some of their disaster flicks are on par with what hollywood is doing like right. the cgi bay and sometimes looks better like the animation wise because mm. the whole thing about like photorealism in CG is getting the movement right mm. and getting the face right because mm. evolutionary we can tell when a face mm. doesn't look right or is CG because mm. right. we've had millions of years of looking at faces yeah. we may not know that in ourselves but evolutionary mm. we've seen f- faces mm-hmm. yeah it's getting the animation right getting the face right and getting the lighting photo reel yep. where yep. you can have a character or a, mm. a CG character that looks real like mm. Thanos in Avengers mm. that was done by um, Weta Digital in New Zealand so they're at the forefront of but it they, as well yeah. but they did have an actor didn't they, they based yeah Josh on. Brolin did the yeah. um, mocap yeah. for his stuff but you st- yeah. still need an artist to go in there and clean it up they can't just drag and drop off of uh, yeah. mm. the mocap data because it would look, wouldn't look. You got to find the performance of Thanos in what he did because Thanos is twelve feet tall or something, right, right. whereas Josh Brolin's only like six feet tall. Right, right. So <laughs> the proportions of how he moves mm. need to line up mm. for a character that's that big. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I haven't seen that one. You haven't seen it. You didn't want to see it. Oh, I'm not a big movie guy. <laughs> yeah, I used to watch a lot of movies. Not this year though, because I've been too busy. That's right. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask you? Were you surprised by this year? Or did, do you remember what you expected? I'm not sure. Um, if, I'm not sure if we had a debrief, but it, yeah, we can. It, it, that's why we wanted to get on to next. Sorry, I was just uh, just thinking because mm-hmm. I'm not sure we've, there's been an opportunity to debrief or mm. even think because each time I've done a. Involved, been involved as honours on, on it's been quite different yeah quite different and that's been driven by whoever the candidates are yeah, mm. um, yeah it, it was definitely different than I thought it was going to be mm. I thought it was because as coming off um, 
last year doing a creative project I thought it was going to be more like that in mm. the start mm. like you could just create a project that you wanted and write about it right but but there's something more there's something more yeah. there's the academics and the writing this year that I've done that I never done before I guess the, in the way you word stuff and you know, the words you use is a lot different to how I used to write can you talk that through what that means because because I, I sometimes wonder whether it's not dishonest but whether we whether we're as I don't know like, um, I think it's it's it's, in, it's it, 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 there is yes it is do a creative do a creative project and write yeah. about it but there's a but in there which yeah. is getting results working out yeah. what you're yeah. Cause Cause I wonder what people hear and then what actually happens. It was you know, like, mm. at the start I was thinking of it more of like a scientific research project, mm. not understanding about um, practice-led research in that sense. I thought it was the only research I'd done in, like in high school. Yeah, it yeah. It's like you have a, a hypothesis and then you test and then you get your result which in a way I did with my music but mm. it wasn't a straight up this is exactly what happened and these are the results mm. um, yeah the numbers it was more trying to what I've learned I think is being able to articulate how I think creatively into words, into a dissertation. Because mm. mm. I definitely, at the start, I, c I feel like <laughs> the last two weeks, it just clicked for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the rest of the year, I was a bit, I'm um, an uh, not knowing what I was going, which mm. your guidance has been very beneficial <laughs> with. <laughs> Do you think that that's unavoidable? Do you think that's now that you've had a year of it do you think there's another way of going about this do you think that the the honors doing an honors process could be more uh, more more ex more ex more no, and I'm trying not to sort of go into good and bad it yeah. was well more explained it was but there's that idea of of people understanding more completely what they're in for at the beginning yeah. or, is, or is is it a necessary thing of you get to the last two weeks and everything just goes oh, mm. that's what I'm doing I guess that's what I'm you know. it could just be me because mm. I need to repeat stuff a lot of times to get it to stick and be comfortable with it so that's I uh, that's why I usually write everything down that yeah. you guys say because yeah. I'm not going to remember it yeah. tomorrow Unless mm. I write it down. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I, I think it depends on the, how you learn. I don't learn mm. um, straight, like, as I was yeah. saying. Here, see, so do. Yeah, something. I need yeah. to repeat yeah. what yeah. I need doing at least yeah. two or three times, maybe more, to really understand it. But I, I guess at the end of it, I still don't fully understand all the nitty gritty of it mm. but having the references that we got in our um, modules and stuff being able to <coughs> reference back to it when you're unsure really helps I think mm. yeah absolutely absolutely I mean I, 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 I don't think uh, I don't think we explain and I don't and that's not even the right word <laughs> but I don't think we necessarily you know what? Because I think you why need do we reference? No, I don't, it's always not why do we reference, but there's something else about how we think about this thing that we do. Yeah. Um, you know, because I mean, I, me I remember reading um, Hemingway uh, writing, describing how he works, and I'd never, and I would always thought that you sort of had to write to the, you know, you, whatever you're working on, mm. you had to finish it mm. before mm. you could leave it, mm. you know, mm. finish a song, finish a scene, yeah. uh, la la la, yes. and, and he, 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 
he didn't buy that. He said you, he always stopped. He stopped writing when he knew where he was going. Right. So he didn't feel he could feel he could walk away from the desk or he could walk away from whatever mm. he, his instrument, his tool was. Mm. Yeah. And and I fa I found that a really powerful way of thinking about work. Mm. You know, because um, mm. I'm I'm a late. I didn't I didn't get I had a fear of academia until late and and uh, only by accident ended up doing a master's mm -hmm. and then by you know the master's went really well so the university said well here's a scholarship to a PhD okay. and but I, I, I never saw, saw myself as an academic for mm. some reason mm. <laughs> and I never thought I had a process but I'm I know I'm fascinated when you said coherent space that just yeah. went off in my brain. I just said, ah, that's a concept. That's a way of thinking. That's a way of framing an experience. That really helped when you, know? you put that in yeah. there. Cause but, but that's for me. Mm. Um, but I, you know, but I get, I get lost in the, the, mm. the references and I, the, the whole point of referencing. And, mm. and because for me, it's, you know, like I'm reading, I'm reading, I was reading some, we're doing a show on Thursday, and I've actually f I found some quotes today that will help frame. Mm. So, but they were like coherent space ways ways of framing what mm. it is we're doing. Mm. Yeah, and I guess that the coherent space is a way is kind of my methodology yeah. of framing what my results were. Yeah, because before before you gave me that feedback um, last week it, nothing everything was just and then this happened and this happened <laughs> yeah. and this happened yeah. and then this yeah. happened yeah. but now it, I guess the way I rewrote those sections were coherent space in the sense of reverb in the space where everything sits yeah. in a physical space and also coherent space harmonically mm everything fits within the 12 tone scale yeah um i think there was a third but i can't remember yeah, yeah but mm. the coherence was the real and i wonder if that's mm. a constant human search is, is mm. for is to create coherent you know are we using with co with a vaccine for COVID? are we trying to create a, mm -hmm. a a coherence a coherency between all the things that have occurred all the evidence mm -hmm. all the things that therefore that will then allow us to move into that space mm -hmm. you know i i um and it's it, and i was thinking about what you said in the last two weeks and i thought so because i sometimes don't know that uh post-grad programs and there's so much work that's gone into, mm. you know, mm. the prep. You know, I remember doing when I did masters at Griffith. They were just handing out, you know, mm. paper on on inf all sorts mm. of information, mm. and I and it took me ages to feel free in it or to feel mm. like I I kind of understood what I. I think I don't know. I don't, I don't quite what I'm saying. Other than the transition from undergrad to postgrad is it necessarily and should it be difficult and should you mm. has everybody been through yeah, what um, you've been through this year I'm uh, not sure. I don't know <laughs> has yeah. Ber 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 <coughs> I think has well we might find out if I interview everyone else well it would be yeah. see I reckon it'd be worth reflecting on what did you know and yeah. what do you know now mm. if people could remember that I think what people what I really learned because I didn't understand how to write with references. I was mm. trying to reference, like put quotes in and reference. Mm. Whereas where I understood towards the end of writing the dissertation was really using the references to back up what you're saying. Absolutely. And I had to learn how to say stuff that would... Um, Be justified. Yeah, mm. like being able to Give, like give my own voice but also yes. be able to reference yes. yes not what it does for you yeah what, what, what does it do for you not what, what you do for it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i think that's something i learned mm. with referencing and being able to write a dissertation mm. is you really it's your own knowledge but you're backing it up with knowledge that other people have gained yeah to prove yeah. what you're saying yeah and not just splurting stuff out that could be, mean anything or not be yeah. backed up. Yeah. 
I would hope everybody is in your position <laughs> by the end of the year, in mm. a sense, yeah. because it seems to me that you've you've been through a process that has um, uh, profoundly affected yeah. you, um, which is about knowledge, which is about how no how you gather knowledge, mm. which is about how you engage with other people. Um, how you engage with the field, whatever, yeah. you know, all of those areas, which um, it seems to me you have an objectivity about you now, um, as opposed to the subjectivity that you had at the beginning, if I can put it like that, that you're, that you haven't lost your own sen your own views, but you've been able to... I think, like, f formalise that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Good. also see it there and place it there yeah. without without being uh, losing energy or drive it seems yeah. to me that your your energies are your you know well, you've, like you've got to the end of the year yeah. very clear there was mm. there was mm. one conversation we had out there some time ago and it felt like you were really yeah. drowning mm. Mm. and i guess at that time i didn't know how <laughs> i was going to get yeah, to this yeah, point yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. But now that, I'm at this point. That ambiguity, I think, is important, though, isn't mm. it? Because, yeah. like this, you, you're talking about the what we get taught at school mm. is to have a hypothesis and then test it, and then you have results and a conclusion. Um, but that's only if you know have a way of testing it. Yeah. Like formulating the question. If you have a test, like you know, which is the fastest rat out of these five rats, <laughs> it's going to be pretty easy to run that yeah. to run that test, or like. You know what color does this rock turn mm. when I bunts and burn it? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the sort of stuff. Yeah. It's like green. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. green. Everyone saw it was green. That's yeah. great. And that's that's, uh, you know, the scientific method. Yeah. Um, but then if you say like, how do I how do you write a book? How do you, is there a scientific <laughs> way of mm. testing that or, or sort of that sort of thing? I think that's that's what practice based or yeah. practice led yeah. research is meant to be doing is where yeah. you don't because there's lots of different paths to the end yeah. point. And when you when you got those raw found sounds. You just chose the methods you needed to get to mm. a cohesive point. Yeah, it just kind of happened, even yep. though you instinctually, didn't instinctually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's right. He's what Patrick was saying before. You, you sought order or you sought coherency yeah. um, where there wasn't much, mm. and you, you used the means you you, you had to get mm. there. And then afterwards, you sort of go, "Well, this is how I did it." Yeah. Mm. And hopefully, there's some universal takings from that because mm -hmm. everybody's going to write an album or a book mm. or whatever the, mm. a different way. Mm. So I think that's 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 where the scientific method falls over. Yeah, is in the creative industry, or many areas, but particularly in that area. It, I think it's very uh, like creative industries is very subjective as well. Is highly that's right. Yeah. It doesn't the empirical kind of way of looking at it doesn't kind of work. Yeah. <laughs> when there's multiple it avenues, can't be, this is the only way to do it because there's multiple ways to do yeah. everything in creative industries I think yeah because you can look at it from so many different perspectives mm. you don't want to start a new creative work and go I know exactly how this is going to be at the end yeah that's never, pretty rare <laughs> you know, you know, it's usually like I hope this works and you know poking I was watching um, a really interesting podcast last night and they mentioned Leonard Cohen's um, verse in Hallelujah and it was the um. baffled king composing um, and it just said that's that's exactly what it is. If you're a composer, it's like the baffled. You don't really know where you're going no. with the process of creativity. A lot of the time, do you have the skills, and you know you want to bring out something pleasant or something you know that you want to listen to again. Yeah. But often, it's the process is quite confusing. Yeah. You know, um, and so that's what you've been trying to document. Yeah. Something that's kind of like in a way yeah. almost yeah. somewhat inexpressible. Parts of it are definitely ex yeah. inexpressible. Yeah. How you create stuff, so I yeah, it's hard think to work. That's why it's why it's confusing. It must be yeah. like initially. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I think that the, 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 it's part of it. But how do you think? How do you think? Yeah. And the question is really, yeah. how do you think? And, and understanding how you think, mm. and that's actually more important than we think. Mm. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Because that's you know, in a sense. It seemed to me in the last few weeks that's what we were asking you to do mm. was to actually, as Raf said, you you were you were going this and this and I did this and I did this and I did this, mm. but what was important was why you did that, mm -hmm. and I think that takes people a while to get onto yeah. in post grad is mm. the why, why do well I just did it why, why, I did do, I, why do I need to justify it why do I need to <laughs> even write anything about the fact that I made a decision to do that, mm. and also mm. I think. 
that's a very much a core of it but also having the knowledge of how to express it in word yeah because i don't think i yeah. really understood that yeah at the start well i guess in the sense of an academic paper yeah i guess i didn't understand how to formulate into a dissertation i could I wrote 14,000 words for my results. Mm. <laughs> Only 2,000 of them in, in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So mm. I can write, mm. but it may not be coherent or, again, coherent. It may not be coherent or make much sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me. But what I put in there is very know. coherent and makes yeah. could make sense to a wider Array of and people. I reckon you needed those fourteen thousand words to get to the two thousand words. Yeah. You needed, you need to throw a whole lot of mud on the wall mm. to find the bits that really, really stick, mm. as yeah. opposed to because there will be stuff that you, you know, it's, it's um, um, and I think that that's a really important thing. We, we're so, uh, we're so, this condition to this idea of what of what I've written the first time is what I've written, and that's it. You know, yeah. as opposed to well, like you're not even close. As you know, well. you, mm. that's your first. That's your, you know, the mm. first blah on the page. That's mm. something I had to get, um, yeah, mm. get used to having criticism, and mm. reworking it. You don't have to get rid of everything you wrote. But you can no. rewrite it in a way that makes more sense yeah. and yeah. is more coherent. Yeah, because yeah. the la like last week, most of the time, after I saw Jan on Wednesday or Thursday. I just went through and made sentences shorter using less words but getting to the same point. Mm. But I think that's something I only understood within the last two mm. weeks. Mm. And thank God it happened, yeah. <laughs> in, in a sense. But then it's, that's, that's when it was always going to happen, yeah. in a sense too. Mm. You know, mm. I don't know. You know I, guess it's from, yeah. it, I guess it's got to be different for other people. Because I, I don't... Like my whole life, I don't think I've been an intellectual, as mm. you say. Mm. I'm very smart in music and creativity, but expressing what I have in my head mm. has been always really hard to put into words. Mm. So I don't know if it's and that's a, and that's a tension in in any sort of creative post grad. I think mm. is that I know there were, when. Justin was working on the program. I know we had conversations mm. about that. Is it too academic? Is it too, you know, whatever else we say, mm. <laughs> it's still going to be mm. academic. You yeah, know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just that, that, that most people's effort ends up being in the written word mm. as opposed to being in the creative studio. Mm. But mm. And you also got and a is that solve? I don't know if that's solvable. Whether yeah. that's just a creative tension, you just got to be aware of mm. and working with it, you know, mm. and and finding a way. Did you find that they, I that think the writing and and the the music were in synergy at different um, points, or were, were I a think counter? The way I did it was um, once I'd finished writing everything, I recorded everything I did, like my screen and any yep. thoughts I had yep. while I was working. Yep. So after I finished creating those 10 tracks and going and then removing the manipulation from them, I then went through them one by one to kind of understand what I learned because I wasn't going to remember what I did five weeks before. Mm -hmm. But going through them one by one after I'd created them worked for me because I don't think if I did it in tandem I don't think it w at least for me I don't think it would have worked because I got to get all my ideas out first yep. creatively and then work out what I did afterwards yeah. Yeah. yeah was there a dialogue between the two were they were they were they, were they separated and you, and you need to talk between the two I don't know I'm not sure what I'm asking there other than did one fuel the other? Did one I guess impede the other? Did no, you I, I guess there was no or, impedance. Or no either or. You know, I think um, the creating the music. 
Um, because creating the music was, it definitely had to happen first. Yeah. And I don't think there was any impedance between the two. Yeah. Like, it made, it's, in my head, it made sense to write about it after I'd done it. Because I can go back. I guess it was also a time thing. I needed to get every all the creativity out of done first yeah because I I think I spent like four or five weeks just writing those ten songs and then I spent the rest of the semester writing and rewriting and rewriting like eight weeks worth of Mm. writing so Mm. I guess it could be different for different people yeah it could have gone in tandem for someone else Mm. but for me I needed to like brain fart everything out and then Um, look at it afterwards because mm-hmm. I guess that works for me yeah because I wonder about that process and whether it's so distinct or whether you know, <laughs> you know and, and did, did, you, did you feel that there was a point you left to the music yes um, and did you feel that the music was as f- you taken it as far as you could? I think. Or did you? I, I, and I'm not trying. Again, I'm not saying it's whether well, that was good or bad, yeah, or yeah, that's yeah. wrong or that's right. I'm, no, I'm, I I'm, totally understand. I'm, I'm interested in how the process. The, the pro, yeah. what, you know, because I've I've been aware sometimes because the you know I, I know I know with with um, Darcy Jones when he was doing his perfor- comparisons of performance in theatre and. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. We had to draw a line and say, if you if you start another group, mm-hmm. you know we're mm-hmm. stuffed. <laughs> we're not going to be able. You're not going to be able to take all the notes. So, I guess. But then he. The, but the, to, sorry, to start another group yeah. was there was a, a creative imperative mm-hmm. to do that. And is that, and is that profe- Is that being a professional? Is that being a? I guess I that I is know. part of being a professional. But I guess from the start when I was writing my literature review. I did put in there that I was going to stop at some point yep. with the music, so I had time to write about it because yep. I knew at yep. that point yep. I wasn't going to be able to yep. do it, write about it in two weeks and get it done. Yeah. I needed those eight weeks to, to refine, to and chest, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think that that I mean that it's it's kind of a getting to that sort of understanding. I think whether you can warn people about that or whether you can, people just have to. Because I guess a lot of what I found with the other students, they they've got, I think they're trying to do too much. Mm. Not saying that it's a bad thing. No. But as our lecturers said at the start of the year, it's only like twenty eight weeks or something. The actual mm. academic year. Mm. You can't do a lot in those 28 weeks. Mm. You can't do a massive project. Mm. So I guess I wanted to t- stop at those 10 yeah. tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess in a sense I was lucky to have the question of the musical musically beneficial because I was able to get 30 tracks out of it because yeah. I have different versions of the pieces to showcase the differences between them. Mm-hmm. So I guess having need to stop at some point. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. Th- yeah. with that yeah. yesterday mm. I didn't do I just read through it one more time, made sure I didn't make made sure I, every, all the grammar was correct <laughs> and stuff. And then at like 10 o'clock this in the morning I just submitted it and yeah. then went and got it printed. Because yeah. I was like that's enough. I yep. not, don't want to be up until ten o'clock tonight. It's just yeah, yeah tweak yeah, here yeah, more. Yeah. Like it is what it is now. Yeah. I don't want to stress any more about it. Yep. Just get it out into the world. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Well, well done. Yep. Yeah. Really. <laughs> Completely. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm pretty goes. proud of it. Like, I, th- I wanted to get like a. It's. I can't remember what it was called. Like thermal binding it's called this one right so this is my own personal copy yeah but yeah. i 
John and Ulrika only wanted the um, a spiral bound one. Right. But hopefully this is the first of many. <laughs> have mm. a couple on the mm. wall in mm. a ten years maybe. <laughs> mm. but I'm not sure what I do next year. Mm. Yes, that's the next <laughs> thing. Although I think, you know... There's not a lot to do, really. Um, well, it depends whether you want to fur- do further study or whether you want to take a break or, you know, I yeah. think you know, there's certainly in some ways having something ticking over is a good thing to always to have. You know, some, I, some piece of work, some piece of... Because that, that dilemma of the, the working artist, you know, mm. what makes you an artist mm. is your creative... There's the fact that you are engaged in, mm. in writing or rehearsing or Because I was whatever. doing stuff with Found Sounds before all this. Yeah. And I have a website yeah. that I'm trying to get off the ground where I sell mm. the sounds. So I created a lot of instrumentation and stuff that I think is unique that I could put there. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. And then, yeah. you know, it's... And I've got a whole section on the website now just for my honours work as well. Which is brilliant. Yeah. Which is brilliant. But I, I think as a creative person, you've got to have your own work ticking over. Yeah. If you don't, um, certainly in my world, you become very much at the beck and call of the industry. And the, and the industry is willful and it's forgetful mm. and, it's, and it's brutal at times. Mm. So you've got to have something... That I, guess I think in this day and age, unless you yeah. have the, the thing that you keep going back to, that you know, that's mm, what with my website. Mm, yeah. Like during the mid semester break, I didn't really stop mm. creatively. I was mm. working four or five hours a day on the website, mm. and then I come back and do this. Mm. So it's a good balance, it's yeah. a very good balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. We're at an hour and a minute. I think that's, that's a good place to end I've, so I've got to get done. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, thank you, right? Good fun. Thanks for being on the first episode. No worries. Of yeah. Hopefully of many. Yeah. No, I think yeah. it's a... I think, I think the... Co- I mean, I think conversation is critical. I really yeah. do. Yeah. It's easy not to. It's easy to say, oh, oh, I haven't got time or I haven't, you know, or they won't, they won't want to talk mm. or, mm. you know, yeah. even coming here, I thought, oh, I've had my head buried in essays all day and I'm going, <laughs> I don't have to say, but, yeah. you know... We've been soon, talking for an hour constantly. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so we all have stuff to say. So, yeah. mm-hmm. and, um, and I think, you know, it's the conversation that keeps us ticking over. You know, I've just mm. been delight. I've just been reading what the year 11s and 12s have said about what they did with me over the, the year, mm-hmm. and it's you know you got oh yeah. you got something <laughs> you know they're, they're all they're all quite quite articulate in in their own way you mm-hmm. know, about what they took away from it you mm-hmm. know? and um, yeah so I'm, this is uh, I don't know why I said that but other than that's what I'm firing off at the moment yeah, yeah. and I, and I think we had a really yeah I think the dialogues we had yeah. were yeah. amazing yeah. Cool. yeah and it was very inspirational for me as well. Awesome. Like, always left feeling like my mind was open and free. Yeah, excellent. Same here. Same excellent. here. Same. And, uh, you know, absolutely. Like focused yeah. on the work and all closed up. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Insular. Yeah. No, thanks very much. It's been a really good year. Mm. Thank you. So I'd love to do like more podcasts with both of you. Sure. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Let us know in the future. Um, like one on one, maybe. Because mm. you both have your own. Um, you have your own creative fields mm. I think would be very beneficial to people because I guess there's stuff you can't say when you're teaching mm. and there might be other stuff that I don't know I'm, I mm. find I'm trying to about you I'm trying to bring more of bring the two together mm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I understand there's the curriculum and I understand you know there's stuff to get through but yeah. I find that Contextualizing mm. what I do mm, mm. Um, is important. Yeah, definitely. Um, I talk a lot about my myself in my yeah. lectures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, as but you know, Jacob, I love to lectures. <laughs> Thank you. It's just life, you know, being in bands and mm. but that's being a music hack so for years. The, yeah, but that's also but <laughs> yeah. that's what people want to hear. Right? Give yeah, students context. Yeah, yeah, and, and context yeah. is yeah. really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I you think know. so. We had this example. Can be funny. A couple, <laughs> of, weeks, a couple of weeks ago, when the fir- the first and second years thought the saw the third years acting, mm. and you, they all went. 
oh, oh, I've got to stick this out. Mm. I've got to do three years here so I can get to that. Yeah. Mm. And it was yeah. really amazing. And I think that that, you know, hearing your stories about hacking around in a band mm -hmm. is actually, mm. you know, really important. Mm. Definitely. You know, mm. and, and in context, you know, it, it gives you a sense. It gives you a sense of what's possible. Mm. Mm -hmm. that, that you could be, you could, be, you know, mm. we could be doing that hacking around. Yeah. Around, yeah. Know, yeah. Exactly. It's actually and enjoyable. And I think, I, I think it's particularly in the creative area. Yeah. Those those things that you do in order to to survive, those things that, to keep you charged up, mm. you know, the, the understandings, the clarities, I think, are mm. really important. Mm. Really, and to hear that, you know, and to hear the disasters and hear mm. the successes. Mm. You're just learning from your mistakes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You can't learn yeah. without making mistakes. No, and uh, and it's accepting well, that. I made a lot of mistakes, but, but I learnt from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and possibly, you know, we didn't see early enough for those mistakes. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But, but, but I think it came out in the yeah. end. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it's right. it's physical. It's <laughs> cool. All right. To the real uh, world. Thank you.